checkers in the zone and plenty of checkers in the zone to be blitzing after you make the five point and he's got that blot. So you stay true to your game plan. And can everybody see why this is the bolder play than making his five point? And by the way, I don't, don't feel bad that you would make the five. Most of us are conditioned to do these things. The word condition is the, one of the worst words in backhand. Because as soon as you get conditioned to do something, you're conditioned to make lots of mistakes. You've got to think through each play because every play is different and move one checker and the whole play becomes different. Well, instead of bringing two down to the nine, you could just bring one down and bring one from the 24 to 20 so you can attack that block that's on the 14 point. That's uh -huh. Good point, but then the question is who's attacking who? He's on roll and you've got blots all over the place. He's on roll after you make that move. It's a bolder play. It's a bolder play. It is a bolder play. But however, if you're blitzing, what's one of the major criteria for blitzing? Bring wood down. It's how many checkers can you bring into the zone to be able to blitz? He's, how many times is he going to, right, David, how many times is he going to dance after you make the five point? 16. 16 times. 16 times. If he dances, don't you want to have as many checkers in the zone as possible? If he comes in without making a point, don't you want to have as much ammunition? If your game plan is blitzing, yeah. blitz. And you got all those checkers. Down. Guys, I, we're recorded here, please. Uh, so, it, you know, why did Hitler lose the war? He was blitzing at first and he just conquered everybody because he brought all of his troops and everybody into one area and he attacked with everything he had and then he all of a sudden he attacks Russia against the, uh, the advice of all of his generals and he's fighting on two fronts. The, that's it, they're battling. So you don't fight on two fronts when you're blitzing. All right. You go for it. I think this also goes to Mochi's fourth point is that even if you were to anchor up, you would be down in the race. I, I, I don't know if I counted it correctly, but let's say you did, you know, obviously the first three you're making your five and you anchor up, you might still be down in the race. Mm -hmm. Okay. How big was the defense? How big was the error? Yeah. The so error so was uh, 0 0.051 to make the second best play, which is which was David's idea of bringing one up and one down. It wasn't making, you still don't make, the third best play is a .079 error, which is to make the 20 point. So David, you really did come in second. Very good. Very good. <laughs> That's better than that. You oh, you're better better smarter than, than you look. <laughs> oh. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? There we go. Okay, 2-1 to play. Two on to play. Six five six four. I'm hearing I'm hearing five different plays here. Thirteen eleven. Thirteen eleven six five six four. Yeah, the right play is to hit, but we're not we're playing legal moves now for most of us. <laughs> I just go eight to five. You don't want eight to too five. Many lots out there. Eight to five. Because otherwise, you'll be trying to cover. Okay, it let's time. let's get down to the crux. Are we playing bold? Yes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, Anybody yeah. vote for safe? No. no. Okay. Mochi. Yeah. Uh, this position is. Mike. This position is very good because it happens very often. This kind of position. But people, many people play like eight six and six five because. He doesn't want to get hit. But the best play by far is down 11 and 6 to 5. What would you do if you don't have a block here? I mean, if black checker is not here, like let's say he's here, of course the best play is 11 to 5. Because it makes the board as fastest. Um, the criteria wise, white is down in the race, of course. Um, white as an anchor, he screams for the bold play, right? The, the best play in this case is 11 down and 5 down. That way you can make a bold as fast as possible. Any questions? What's the second one there, Roger? 1310 is the second play, it's wrong by 0 .043. Yeah. But and don't call me Mochi.
White to play 3-2. 13, 10, 6, 4. Who said that? I so that John Viator, 131064. This is my play. Have you been to the cash station this morning? You want to bet on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, once again, the all black area screens for the uh, board play. And the board play should be a 6 to 4. And actually, uh, Extremes likes to play uh, 11 down. I mean, 14 to 11, but I like, I like uh, John's play. <coughs> so the difference between John's play and the screen play are very, very small. And by the way, the difference, as you can see from the rollout, that's not a bright green. I'll teach you a little bit about Extreme Gammon. There's a little triangle there. If it was a bright green, that means Extreme Gammon is screaming at you to make that play, and it's pretty sure it's right from the rollout. But it's kind of a light green, both of those. That means that I really needed to roll this out another 10,000 times, and even then it might not turn bright green. So we can't be sure that it's right. This is more like uh, listening to Matt Cohn Geyer instead of Falafel. It's all close, but one of them is usually right, and the other one always says he's right. <laughs> I'm picking on them because they're here. Well, which is Matt Cohn Guy and which is Matt Cohn? Well, I, I don't want to insult anybody. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Could you go back? One? Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, well, the last thing uh, you want to see is make an 11 point safe play which is worse because black just run. Let's say black rolls 6-4, and it's like all over already, you know. Black is way up in the race, just maybe next time already cube. I don't I don't know. You know, this is the worst case. If you got hit after 3-2, so what? You you have a three sun check back, so maybe you can enter with 24 and make cause some trouble for him. So that's why this is so bad. Now let's say you got hit and you came in on the 24, that's another very, very common mistake that beginners like me make. We don't, we, we come off the 24 and we come up and all your opponent can do is go behind you now. So you can see why it actually would be better to have another checker back on the, on his 20, on his one point or your 24 point so that he can't go behind you because your goal here is to get a shot and hit it. You're way down in the race. So having a third checker back, if you get hit, so what? It helps that part of the game and if you don't get hit, you've got a great chance to make a lovely board. The other advantage with, uh, uh, with 13 to 10 is that if you get hit on the four, you got a good six back to hit him. All right, what Herb just said is, is that if you get hit, you have a good six to play, and that's, uh, again, something we talked about earlier. When you, if you get hit, the one number you can't use to enter with is, is a six. So if you can have a good six to play, now if you roll a one, two, three, four, or five, six, you've got something useful to do with that six. And that's something that he's thinking ahead negatively that if he gets hit. And that's the difference between me and Herb. I know I'm never going to get hit then. <laughs> All right, so one, four. A good friend of mine missed this last night. He saw me putting it together, and he made a mistake. I'm not going to name names, but the guy with the yellow cap and the uh, green uh, shirt uh, uh, sitting there that no, played. I didn't see this. You, this, isn't this the one you missed? Oh, that was, it was the next one. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. You, you pretty much have to. You pretty much have to come in on the A. You yeah, pretty much have to. <laughs> well spotted, Johnny. Yeah. I got that big. In my shoeet, in my shoeet, that's not a given. <laughs> Just come up to the twenty. Who said that, Herb? Okay, I like Herb. on the four point myself. This is why Herb often plays under twelve PR. Yeah. Often. Are right, you going to play safe or bold? Who's for Who's for bold? Who's for safe? <laughs> Okay, we're split between bold and safe. What Tell us, Mochi, what do we do here? What's safe? What's safe? That's a good question. It's all it's all relative. In my mind, Carter here is a relatively quiet person. It's all relative. Well, I think the safe play is 24 to 20 because you are dealing with the back checkers, which is most important thing in this position. Because if you hit him, or hit, hit, hit them, um, most likely you hit back. And 
that's bad because now you have three checkers stuck back on 24 points and you got hit both checkers. But if you enter with 20 points, yeah, like that, now all you should do is fight for the 20 points, which is you are likely to win. If you, if you win to grab 20 <laughs> points, you have such a nice position. Wait a minute, you You're just said something that I didn't know. Yeah. You're likely to win? Yes. How many people think you were likely to win there? I wasn't sure. It looked to me like he's going to hit me on the next roll, and, if, and I'm not likely to hit him back, and he's going to cover. And again, I'm being pessimistic like her. No, you're duping. Uh, you're duping your oh, threes. Okay. You don't want to strip your strip your eight if you hit her. You certainly don't. Oh, okay. You, you are more likely to win battle in a twenty point than the battle in the four point. Ah, yeah. in the inner point. I got you. Because if you hit four, he has four to hit back and two hit back, three and five and six make an anchor. Which is, you know, too and many you're, numbers. You're up in the race, aren't you? All right, so here, this answered Carter's question. What's the safe play? Mm -hmm. It wasn't relatively, it wasn't easy to see that, that, that this is a safe play because it's still dangerous. Everything is risk reward and it's safe compared to the other play. Some people say when they roll doubles, they see double twos and they see a good play. Well, there might be a great play that's better. Everything is relative to what is the other possible play you can make. Nothing stands by itself. It's only a good play or bad play in comparison. So there's a really good trick that I that I learned again from Perry. Narrow down your decision if you can. Look at all possible plays. If you can narrow it down to two, which one is better? They may both be horrible. Which one's less horrible? You're always comparing hopefully two plays. Sometimes, if you're like me, you've got seven plays you're looking at and you don't know where to go. So I just pick the best two. Sometimes I flip a coin and then I work at it. So it's better than nothing. Well, I always refer a safe play as the uh, dealing with the back checkers, which I call a safe play. The safe play. Yeah. That's a good, that's a really good hint. Did you hear that, everybody? No. He always considers that the safe play is moving the back checkers. You're playing on his side of the board is generally a safer play than playing aggressively on your side of the board. Yeah. Am I saying that right? All right, everybody thought? Are we bold or safe? Are we bold? Hit out. <laughs> Hit out? No, you're, you're bold. No. Who says safe? <laughs> Falafel and Toby say safe. Carter says bold. Who are we going to vote for? Falafel <laughs> and Toby or Carter? Gee, that's hard. I've got, uh, I got a, a, a giant, the guy who won more money in backgammon in the last two years than probably anybody, and Carter who's just won money from me in the last two years more than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mochi, take it away. Yeah. Yeah. I show yeah, the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Falafel and Toby were right and Carter was wrong. Oh my board. god. Across the board. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, it's second best just player too, too many to shots. If you, if you hit 11 points, you have to, you know, come up for, from 24, which leaves like four blocks and zillion down shots, which is not so nice. In this case, you are up in the race. You want to consolidate the position by making a nine point. And you get a beautiful distribution of checkers. That's right, that's right. You know, I, 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 as they mentioned earlier, I give a lot of lessons and, and what, I have several students that don't realize how important it is not to have too many blots around the board unless you have an incredibly strong <laughs> position and then you want plenty of blots. But when you don't have a lot of blot, that, a really strong position and you should be playing safe, for every blot, you should take a shot of vodka or something, and then they'll understand the position after about four or five plays. It really works well. You really realize how bad it is to leave too many blots.
We've got two more and then we have a couple of announcements to make. But we're going to make it. 6-4 to play. There is a black blot on the two point, on White's two point. And there is a black blot on his own two point. I'm sorry that the blacks are hard to see in this bit, in this screen. Yeah. It's Mochi's fault. He made me change it. 22-18 oh. and 8-2 hitting. He only has three three points in this board. That's correct. He has three made points plus the plus the two point. It's what we call a leapster board. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're right. We got a six out four down from Herb. John likes to I hit. Said 22 18 and 8 2 hitting. Yeah, 22 18, 8 2 hitting. John, you're very, very aggressive. Yeah. Okay, should we be playing bold or safe? Bold? Bold. I got a lot of hands for bold. How about safe? Anybody think safe? Okay, so most people agree bold. Is that correct, Mochi? Yeah. So what's the best bold play you can make? Yeah. Viator is right. Wow. Nice work, Jeff. Very good. Very good. Do you use a tape measure for this? <laughs> um, yes. This position, you have to play ball because you have better ball. <coughs> you have four point ball against three point of ball plus blood here. So even if you can hit, you can maybe you can hit back. And if, if he does, it's, it's great. So and also you are down in the race, so you don't want to, you know. You don't let, let him go. You, know, you have to hit and uh, go for it. A question. Yes. I thought if you blitz, then we don't care about the other other side of the board. Why why don't we go 13 to 9 with the four? Well, you are kind of prime. You know, you have three checkers back behind the four prime. You want to. If you are hit, if you are hit, you are already pretty bad anyway. So you just play for the, a better good situation and I mean good sequence. You understand what I mean? There's one other there's one other answer to your question that also what Mochi said is is true. But when you play thirteen to nine, you haven't added a builder for the one and the two points, the two points that are open. Now, if you could bring a builder down into the zone to a place where you can cover the two point or hit the two point or one point, now you've got a very strong reason to do that. It might still be right to get the back checkers moving in comparison, but then it would be a tough call for me. But in this case, because 13 to 9 doesn't give me another direct builder, it's not as important as getting that, that unstacked on the other side. Unstacking is one of your major goals anytime, especially when you might get stuck in the outfield. The other thing is, one of the big things you have to worry about, if this blitz is successful, how are you going to lose this game? If you can't move those back checkers and you have to break your point. It happens to me every single time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question. What if you hide the blot from the two from the two point and to the four point or the five? Would that change anything? If you move if you move Black's checker from his two point to the four point, yeah. and not have a blot? Right, not have a blot. I don't know, I'll have to put it in extreme gamma and, and we'll have to look at it. And uh, Sometimes you can really be a jerk, falafel, to ask questions like that. You know, I mean, we got this whole prepared. Sometimes. We know, I know exactly what to say because I've seen the answers, and then you ask me about a different position. What kind of a person are you? Matt, you got an answer for that? Probably not. <laughs> you just wanted to raise your hand to tell us that? Thank you for that help. That helps. Wow. You know, I miss you. I really do. And as you gain weight, you're gaining vocabulary. 
I mean, for five, for, for, for three years, I would ask. Him. Hey, it's unbelievable. For three years, I'd ask Matt a question, and he would say, "I say, why would you make this place? It's because it's right." That's the only, the only answer I ever got. Now we put four sentences together. This is wonderful. No wonder you're going up on the Giants list. You can talk. People know he's gotten better. I'm glad you've broken down and been able to do this. Thank you for the explanation, by the way. I don't mean to be sarcastic. I really appreciate it. I listened to him last night and made the wrong play. It was wonderful. I'm in the, I'm in the match against Falafel, and I'm down to a really tough position. And Falafel, being a sweet, generous guy, and, and by the way, I found out later on that these guys are roommates. He says, you can ask Matt, and he'll tell you what to do. And Matt gives me the wrong play. And it's wrong by point oh seven, by the way. Yeah, point oh seven. Oh, right. you, you were right. It was wrong to come off the. Oh. You do come off the ace point there. And I got the answer from. Don't. Here's the point. If you're playing someone, don't ask their roommate what the right play is. <laughs> well, it, it really depends on the roommate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, one more position, then we'll wrap it up. And this is one that my friend uh, had a little problem with last night. Okay. Five four to play. 10-5 and 13-9. Viator again steps up to the plate, says 10-5, 13-9. He's playing bold. Anybody else got a thought or another play? I'd go for Johnny. We're getting, we're getting hit on the other side of the board, so I hit him. You kind of have to attack to protect that lot on the three. Okay. Anybody else? The best defense is to get on the pass. What about, what about pick and pass? What about 10 5 5 1? You don't like that play? No? This is not, we're playing scoreless. We're playing double, we're playing normal match score, 11 away, 11 away, or money game. So we don't got complicated with the score. Nobody here plays for money. Though. Yeah, okay. Nobody, we don't play for money. <laughs> Well, I guess it duplicates the six, right? Well, can come in with 20 numbers. All right. One thing I'm hearing is you're playing bold. Does, do people agree with that? Yes. And I think somebody said, that, I think Carter said that you're going to get attacked like crazy if you don't play bold. He's going to hit you with everything he can. So you probably do need to hit that five. The only question is whether you pick and pass or play super bold. And the answer is that John is right again. John, you should have given a lecture. And it's a 19% error to pick and pass, to play that safe. You need to make that five point to win this game. That's the answer. You gotta, you gotta go, go forward with this, and you need to make the nine point. Uh, real quick, we, we're right on time. We're supposed to quit in four minutes. Let me just tell you that we had a USBGF meeting yesterday that uh, Perry and Karen ran. It's, I've been part of many, many associations in my life. That was the best meeting, and I'm sorry, Karen and Perry, it's not because of you. You did a great job. You always do.